Hey guys, it's Nate from PlayYourCourt.com, filming from the studio here in Virginia Beach, Virginia, also known as my house and my office. Um, bringing some content to you uh, through these challenging times, doing the best we can. I know the, the filming situation is imperfect, but we are in still a situation that we can still learn, right? Like maybe we don't have access to the court, but we, we, we can still learn strategy and so much more, right? So today, what are we talking about? It's strategy once again, whether it be doubles or singles, today we're gonna to focus on doubles because there's been such a large request for it. But what we are learning is how to improve our anticipation and recognizing visual cues, okay? So let's first talk about how we originally, how we, the, the first steps in anticipation. Like what, what are the first things that we, as athletes, when we start playing tennis, what is the first phase of anticipation? And the first phase is reaction. It's reactionary, all right? And so what reactionary means is I see a ball going high up over the net and I'm mid court and I see that ball looming over my head and I, I should turn and run, right? Like I'm reacting to what I see, but I had no anticipation I did not see it happen. I'm merely reacting to what I now see, all right? And, and that is the, the first phase. Now, the second phase is when we start getting good at poker, all right? We are reading the tells, and this is what I'm talking about with the visual cues. We are learning to recognize what's happening. And a big part of this is, t is once we have hit the ball, keeping the eyes at the ball, the incoming ball through contact, once we've hit the ball, we are pulling our eyes up and we're watching the opponent because it's their body language, their positioning in the court. That's what's gonna tell us what's happening on the incoming ball. And why don't more of us do this? It's very simple. We are spectators, all right? We wanna see how great that ball was that we hit or how awful the ball was, right? One of the two, all right? And so that robs us of valuable information. We want to be looking to anticipate what is happening, all right? And so very, very easy reference is, am I ripping or am I lobbing? What do you see, right? Rockets loaded up, right? If I'm balanced, I know you can't see my feet and where my slippers, because I'm here in the house, but if, if I'm balanced and I'm here, I'm ripping, right? I'm going through that ball, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to attack, or at least, at the very least, be neutral, right? So the second one is, am I attacking? Am I, am I being aggressive? Maybe with a lob, with a slice lob, right? But from here, I'm, I'm blocking, which indicates that a lob is probably coming, right? And so where there can be some confusion is the top spin lob, because from here, could I lob? Yes, if I'm moving backwards, right? Because you can't hit a top spin lob moving forward particularly effective. So those are the things, that's the valuable information that you're looking for is watching this. And, and the pros are seeing things. Stephen Huss, a uh, uh, former Wimbledon champion, we had a discussion where he was telling me on the return of serve, when he's at net waiting for his opponent to return serve, he's watching their head. He's watching to see what grip they're in, to see if they're chipping, to see if they're in a semi-Western. And that's obviously super advanced, but it tells you the value of watching for these, these visual cues. The third and the most advanced form of anticipation is regulating the outcome with a plan and confirming it with visual cues. It's a mouthful, I know, all right? But it's the three R's, right? So we have reacting, that's what we're doing in the very early stages when we first start learning the game. And then we have recognizing the visual cues. And then third and not least, we have regulating the, the, the outcome with a plan and recognizing the visual cues. So let's talk about this. Let's get on the board to really talk about this one. So, and this goes back to the lobbying video, all right? The, the, the previous video that we released. <clears throat> if this player hits a short ball, all right? So the ball goes here, right? As this player is moving up, they need a plan, all right? And the plan here may be, I see this player moving towards the alley. I'm going to drive this ball through the middle, all right? So what do we think the outcome is here? 
that's a righty. All right, the chances are that most players below the four or five level is they're gonna lob. And so what it tells this player is that they need to hover. They can't go all the way in. But if they knew that they were driving down the, the middle, maybe because they have a weak back end and then maybe they'll just miss and they're hoping this, their partner starts working to move towards the middle, they know where to move. They know to hover because they know where they hit the ball. Okay, so another idea, let's look at a, another scenario here. All right. In this scenario, <laughs> this player, all right, on this ball, they've got a short ball, they've got the short approach, all right, and they've hit this ball on a short angle, all right. We talked about this in the last video as well, but by knowing where they've hit the ball and knowing that these guys have been playing for years, right, so this player is going to shift, they've got to cover the line. Because they know where they hit, they know that they have to push and pinch, right? Because they are now responsible for the wide angle, right? And they also know that they're responsible for the middle, okay? And this is really important because if that ball went over there without any intent, without having that plan, how would you anticipate it? You wouldn't know that the ball was coming back at that angle, all right? And so that is why... We really want to know where we're hitting the ball because it helps us recognize patterns. The easiest analogy to recognize this is if you were playing basketball and you turn off the lights, right, and you're shooting and you can't see what it did you, you can hear, right, but did you miss wide? Did you miss to the right? Did you miss to the left? Was it short? Was it long? You're not getting any feedback, right, but you turn the lights on and you can see how you missed and you can start learning how to control your shot. So it helps us with targeting but it also helps us know what to expect, all right? So guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's instruction, just piggybacking off the, the, the last doubles video, but those are the ways that we're gonna learn anticipation and learn to recognize the visual cues, all right? So I hope you enjoyed today's content. Um, speaking of content, we have the vault open uh, for, within the platform, all right? And so what is the vault? The vault is thousands of hours of, of instruction that Scott and I have, have put together and typically it's reserved for the premium membership. Um, but we have opened it for, the, for all players. The entry level 599 membership will get you the, uh, the, the keys of the vault. All right, something that's typically reserved for a higher level membership. Uh, we just want you guys to have access to as much instruction as you can while you're home um, and, and look, looking to keep your game to improving all right so make sure you get on there www.playercourt.com check it out it's lifetime you're gonna have all this stuff um and there's so much more in there there's the talk tennis community and community means everything there's people talking about what they're doing what they're doing for fitness what they're doing to keep their games going from home there's so many cool ideas out there but get on there check it out and i will see you in the classroom very soon see you guys